Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to check out how you can effectively pose your characters in ZBrush. There are plenty of ways of doing this. You can do this just through traditional masking and just moving your stuff around. But we found that the most elegant and effective way is using C spheres through the Transpose Master tool. This is a really quick way, and it's very similar to the way rigging works in traditional 3D software, where you're actually you're actually setting up a proper rig. You're setting up uh, a skeleton. So the way we use this is we go under C plugin and we have the transpose master. Before you do this though, you need to make sure that your model in this case has multiple subtools. So we, we have a pair of eyes here and we have the body. So you click the C, the, the C sphere rig button. This doesn't do anything directly, but uh, the moment we hit this one, T post mesh, everything is gonna be converted to a transpose mesh. It's gonna be merged and um, merged and go into the lowest subdivision level. So if we have CSW rig enabled and we hit this one, we're gonna see that we, um, we're we now in the lowest lowest subdivision and it has been merged. And on the bottom here, we have a little CSW. So in terms of where we're placing our rigs now, we, um, we generally use the move tool here just to move it around. And we place this on at the root here, which is around uh, where the hips are. Enable symmetry, just so it will be in the center line. And then we look at a skeleton here. This is generally how we place or how we know where to place stuff. This is this is important due to you need to know where stuff articulates from. It kind of makes sense just to do it like a regular skeleton because you know for in this case it's a human, so you yeah. want to place it where the bones actually are. Yeah, you want to be as true as possible to the original articulation. Mm. So with that that said, let's start placing some joints here. I use the hotkey Q just to go into draw mode and W to go into move mode. You can click here to uh, make another, I click on the chain to make another C sphere. And then we can just move this down. Uh, I prefer to make my draw radius as small as possible just so that it doesn't influence any of the other ones. Yeah, if you make it completely, if you make it one, then you'll only affect yeah. the, the one C sphere that you're currently touching. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. If you hold on the shift key, you can snap through different views in ZBrush as well, which I find to be quite handy when doing this. And you can make this as advanced or simple as, as, as you want. Maybe you just want a quick pose. Yeah. When the legs out, the arms up or whatever. It's just a quick pose to just, you know, get you back into sculpting. Or you can make it super advanced with having all the finger joints available, you know, curl the fingers exactly how you want to. Yeah. It's. It's a very useful tool. Yeah, exactly. More than saying, I, I use this. I use this a fair bit just for for concept sculpting. If I just need to pose my characters up, but also for more advanced things as well, where you need to actually spend some more time on the pose. Yeah, I did a marvelous designer tutorial a while back where we actually used this exact base mesh, and she was she was posed with. C spheres as well. Yeah, it's just super quick. It's so much quicker than doing traditional rigging because this is also far less technical. If you gotta do traditional rigging, you gotta <laughs> you gotta know so many more things. And the advantage of this is that you can just keep it all in ZBrush, and you can keep it with your mesh that has subdivision levels already, and everything will just transfer to to your mesh. Yeah, it's really really quite a useful tool. So we're not gonna do it good too crazy here with the hands because this just takes too much time <laughs> for this tutorial. We're not gonna bore you with that. But if you wanna do this properly, you just you just drag drag it out like you do with the body and uh, you just articulate it like this. You essentially put C spheres where you want your where you want the areas to articulate from. So this is a pretty decent base. So let's test this out. Let's see if this would actually work. Uh, this is very much a first pass. Uh, it's just so we can see where the where the error is going to be. So if we go under Tool, all the way in the bottom here, we have one called Rigging. And if we hit Bind Mesh now, now it's nothing is, no, you haven't really got a message or anything, but now the, it's been bound to it. So now we use the Rotate tool here. 
and then we can start rotating stuff around. You don't want to, you don't want to use the move one because <laughs> then you can see that you might you might just accidentally move stuff all the way over here, which gets a bit gets a bit crazy. So you generally just want to rotate the joints around here. Just treat the joints as they are, you know, regular joints. Yeah. So you can see we're having some deformation issues here and there. I think it's fine. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, yeah, regular human anatomy. This can be super easily fixed just by adding supporting C-spheres to sort of yeah. keep the volume intact. It, you kind of got to think about it as like, it's not a traditional, traditional skeleton. You know, we, we need something like a rib cage potentially, but yeah. it doesn't have to look like a rib cage. We just have to have C-spheres in place to take over the deformation for. Like when we're rotating the arm, obviously we don't want the entire torso to move. Yeah. So once once this is in, in, in the bind mode, you can just disable this and then we can add additional joints. So ex specifically what Morton was talking about here is, as you can see that once we rotated the arm up, the rib cage is going a bit crazy. So what we can do, first thing I'll do is I'll actually add some some additional joints into into the spine just so we get nicer deformation for that. But then we can, um, then we can just actually build a rib cage here. A super ghetto ribcage. Yes, you know, this is what I'm talking about. It doesn't have to represent an actual ribcage. No. It just has to, you know, have the volume and, uh, you know, take over for, let's say, the arms in this case. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, in, in traditional rigging, you would you would just paint weights here, but we don't really have that, that ability in ZBrush. So um, this is your way of controlling the weights. Yeah. I also find that when it comes to, when it comes to getting sharper deformation around the joints here. You might want to add a joint here and a joint there. Uh, just, just so you have a, you have a, th a triple joint. Or you can do, you can add one here and you can add one. Let's see if this works. <laughs> <laughs> Something is a bit tricky. And you can add a joint here. So this is generally, this generally works fairly well for volume preservation. So let's see if this works better now. Again, hit bind mesh. And then we can do this. Oh, use the rotate tool. So now you can see it works slightly better. We can add more of these. Uh, and uh, if, if you want this to be pretty much perfect or as perfect as we can go, you can you can just keep adding these out here. So let's just try and see if there are any other ways of doing this. And uh, if there are any other areas which requires more. So for instance, the head will probably need a jaw. It probably like a mouth mouth joint. Yes, <laughs> something like this. <laughs> Uh, and if you want to, if you want to deform the areas, uh, if if you want to deform certain areas, you definitely need joints there. For instance, the hands here. Yeah. If you want to deform all the fingers, well, you just need to make joints or scissors for all the fingers. So once you're happy with your uh, with your layout here, you can go to again bind mesh, and now we can start to actually pose this guy up, and. Uh, I'm not too concerned about errors like this because we can always just sculpt those out afterwards. But you know, if you wanted to be particular about it, you could add more joints yeah. and fix the deformation there. Yeah, if this wasn't a relatively quick tutorial, I would probably do that. <laughs> but uh, let's face it, we don't we don't want to bore you with too many details here. Yeah, because it's just more of the same thing, really. Yeah. You know, this is these are the basics of of how to do posing in ZBrush. You can see how the mouth joint, mouth joint, I guess, it kind of fixed the weird deformation we had in the head before. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's nice. Okay, so once you've done your mega nice pose, which, <laughs> <laughs> no comment, <laughs> then we can go to, um, we can go all the way up to uh, Transport Master, and then we can hit T pose to sub T. And this will just bring back your high res sculpt and you put your sub tools in the correct place here. This is super useful compared to if you do regular deformation with masking and the transpose line, yeah. then you would have to do repeat the same process over and over again for all your sub tools. This, yeah. this really comes in handy if you have something that's a lot, you know, has a costume on it, it's really advanced. Yeah. This is also uh, quite, uh, this is why I, was, I said I wasn't too worried about uh, how deformation is broken, because we're always going to fix this. You just got to re-sculpt some areas here. And you will always have to re-sculpt areas. Yeah. Just because there is no way this is going to work. Like we do this even in production, like for VFX, we do shot sculpting, just because the rigging isn't good enough there. And that's like proper riggers. So don't be afraid of doing specific sculpting like this to fix areas. Yeah. Uh, and that was a little pro tip for you. This is just a little bonus. Uh, currently, as you can tell the symmetry is is uh, is pretty broken here, just because we posted. 
So if we go on a transpose, and now we can use uh, under uh, symmetry here, we have possible symmetry. Now the symmetry is has been restored here. So if you want to do additional sculpting on this, this is going to work pretty well. Obviously, this only works if your your metal model is symmetrical. Yes, you know, it has the same kind of polys on either side. Yeah. So that's just a quick little tip for you guys. So I hope this here has been a bit of a useful tip for you all. Yeah. See ya.